Hello. We're a little bit early, I think. Are we? Ah, oh, we're three, three minutes early for a change. Oh, let me just move them out of the way. <clears throat> so, how is everyone? Um, welcome once again. Um, right. We're changing. We did, we, yeah, I remember last week I said we were making some changes. Uh, we're still going along with that. Um, and uh, we may be shortening the length of the show a little bit. I know it's only on an hour and a half now, but... Um, I'm not going to be, uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing any more building during the show. Um, we've noticed that most people tend to drop off once um, that, once the, you know, the building phase starts. It's like people tend to lose interest a bit. Um, so it's all about audience retention. Um, I'm just going to turn that fan on because it's a bit warm in it. So, um, where to begin? You know, every week I have everything set up in my head, but um, every week I forget where to begin. I, luckily, I've got uh, some notes written down. Um, yeah, so I, I just noticed earlier on Hong Kong models of actually releasing a 132nd uh, Dam Buster. Um, can't remember the name of the plane now. Lancaster, is it a Lancaster? Uh, anyway, I think it's Avro Lancaster. Can't remember. But anyway, yeah, they're releasing a 132nd Dam Buster version, and uh, the box art looks pretty sweet, I've got to say. Um, we're going to have a look at some news in a minute, uh, what's happening in the world. Um, now, uh, there was a couple of things I wanted to mention that I got this week. I, well, I've had this a little bit longer, but I wanted to bring this up because this is um, Citadel's new water jar. Well, it's new, a few months, a few months old now, as I understand it. They brought this out. Brilliant little bit of kit. Um, their old one was like this. Which was a good bit of kit also. But this one, if I just get a... So, unfortunately, this one doesn't hold your brushes out of the water like that one did. But it's got um, the little bits of kit at the bottom there to just run your brush over. You've also got the ribbed side for your pleasure <laughs> to, um, you know... And um, you've also got these. Now, these are great. Uh, so, basically, you've got these. And with your round brushes, you can run them up in the um, slot there and twist them. And as they come out, they will form the perfect uh, point for you on your brush. And they're brilliant. Now, the best thing about this, I think, is the fact that this was £5. And you'll notice it's grey plastic. You could paint this. Um, in fact, I intend to uh, at some point this week. I'll, more on that in a minute. But, um, yeah, you could paint this and uh, it would look rather stunning, I think. So I don't know whether that's what they had in mind when they made it. Um, but it's definitely, you know, um, so it's more like a kit. It's like a kit, uh, a, a paintbrush cleaner, um, a tool all in one it's um the gift that keeps on giving um great bit of kit and as long as they haven't gone up since i bought this i bought this a few months back now but uh yeah a fiver brilliant <laughs> so uh in terms of what i've done oh uh, sorry i'm a bit ahead of myself i also picked up some of this uh, i've never seen it before but uh, i managed to get some it's mr dissolved putty and um yeah i quite like that just realized i haven't got my chat window open just bear with me a sec right so 
yeah so we've got this uh mr dissolve putty i'll let you know what it's like when i use it um but uh it's made by the same people who use make this and i use this a lot especially if you're 3d printing this stuff is amazing uh mr hobby mr surfacer 500 really is good stuff um i use that a lot um and um yeah i just thought i'd get that at the same time so we'll see we'll see what it's like um also managed to pick up now I'll give this a go uh because i've got the vallejo stuff and yeah vallejo enough said about that um Migamo, uh, this one's the matte one. It's only a small bottle, but I thought I'd give it a try. Um, now, why was I so uh, despondent with Vallejo? Well, believe it or not, last night, this was primed. Uh, this was primed completely with this. And then it was painted with a silver uh, Mr... Mr. Cully, Mr. Cully, Mr. Color Super Metallic. Um, and basically, it started flaking off. It just started coming away from the surface. Um, so I thought, I'm going to go and get it off while it's relatively new on. And I went out in the kitchen and I rang, rang the hot tap. And I placed it under the hot tap. And it came, the whole thing came off like a decal. It just slid off in one go. Um, amazing. Um, so there's absolutely no adhesion to the plastic whatsoever with uh, Mr. Vallejo Surface Primer. Um, rubbish. Absolute rubbish. So, got to do that again. Do the Steinal Revs I will use, or as John suggested, um, one of the Tamiya paints, maybe. Um, while I've got Steinal Revs, I should keep using that um, until that's gone. And then uh, I shall uh, move on to something else. I've also got, uh, I'm using a lot of the automotive primers at the moment. Um, you get them from the pound shop uh you can get gray white and black um they even do uh fluorescent orange um which is a bit bizarre but yeah it's over there somewhere um and uh, so yeah we're gonna uh i normally use them lately uh i find you get much much better uh coverage it's more permanent and um yeah so that's that um So we covered that. So let's go over, and I'm going to turn the screen sharing on now, and we'll have a look at the. Um, oh, I've just seen a thing there. So um, just going down the chat, I, I like a lot of it's just hellos, um, and then we come to Rob. Never had a problem with Vallejo. My go-to paints. Ah, now the paints. Um, I'm not on about the paints here. Well, I'm on about the, just the surface primer. I've got a lot of Vallejo paints, and I've used them. I use them a lot. But um, I'm on about the surface primer at the moment, primarily the surface primer. Um, not very good at all. So, um, but yeah, there are, yeah, the paints, I, I have no problem with the paints. Those Poundland Rattle Can paint stink. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, that's the downside to them. You can't really do them inside. You've got to do them outside and then you need a good day. And um, yeah, so there's pros and cons. Um I mean, uh, when when I done that, when I when I primed that yesterday, I wasn't. Uh, I, I had a few of the other people were in the um, hangout with me, um, and there's no way I could have come back with it that clean um, in the short space of time I'd gone to the kitchen. I came back. I said, "Look, this has just come off like a decal, and it was spotless." 
Um, incredible. So I'm going to go on to. Uh, I'm going to share the screen now. Um, and this is a. This is a website um, that does modelling news. Now, um, I've. I'm, what I used to do was I would get. I'd have to go around searching for all the bits of news and and collect them all together in various folders and then come on and show them um, as, as, you know, bits of news I found. Um, it was very time consuming. Uh, it wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, so what I've done is I found this site that deals with a lot of the news. And I thought what we could do each week, we could just pop in and have a look at that site together and maybe discuss some of the points or issues that were going on on there. Um, so with that said, let's go into screen share. So I'm going to minimize that. And we're going to go into the modeling news. Now I'm going to move the chat out of the way for a minute so I won't be able to see um, anyone's chat. But there are people in there that will be able to answer you any questions you have or and they can get in touch with me if they need to. So with that said. So we're going backwards a bit, to be honest, because it starts with the late. So let's go down to the bottom and go up. Let's roughly pick, uh, so we've got April the 12th there. Um, let's have a April 16th. So let's do the last two weeks then. Um, so there's a, some information there on the Kitty Hawk 148 scale Sukhoi SU-34 fullback. Um, that's uh, some guys doing a build um, and you can go along and follow his build which is uh, a good thing so you know if that's what you want to do just follow that and then uh, AK now I found this interesting AK are bringing out some more stuff they seem to be bringing out a lot of stuff lately but uh, the one that particularly took my fancy was the wet palette um, and I quite like that. I, I, I think that's um, really quite smart. They've got a book on the Panzer Division coming out and obviously something there on their version of, uh, it looks like a 2K epoxy resin mix type thing. You know, you mix the blue and yellow parts together and, and uh, you make a really tough substance. We've got the aces high French jet fighters. Let's see, can it? No, it won't show us any more than that, really. Um, but we can see there's the wet palette, it's a little bit bigger. I do like the idea of that. The trouble is, they don't tell you how much it's going to cost. Um, it's a bit of a shame, but I dare say we could find out. And then there's their Panzer Division book. And that's their green power. And then we come up and we've got... Um, so this was April the 18th, new art markings and suspension added to the 35th scale US medium tank M4A376 from Meng models. Now, um, would that be their, the US's main battle tank of that period? Um, yeah, no, medium battle tank, medium tank. New springs are added to our preview. Read on. Let's, uh, let's do just that then. 
So this is their uh, new M4 from May. Um, 1,190 parts. Really? Does that, that seems a lot. Yeah, it does look nice though. I've done. I'm, I'm, I've only built one tank, so um, M4 medium tank, also called Sherman. Um, so it says the M4 medium tank, also called the Sherman, was a tank without a frightening main gun or thick armour. It was not designed by famous scholars or driven by a crew with shiny medals. However, it's the peak of the then industrial production. At the beginning of the design, its size was taken into consideration for strategic transport by ship. A large number of other weapon components were used to simplify the design and production. There's a photo of the. Is that a model? Is that a model? Or is that a real one? Thanks to the uniform specifications, the same parts machined by different production process could be produced in large numbers. The M4 Sherman's gun was not limited to a specific ammunition type, and its tracks didn't need to be changed to special tracks for rail transport. So it was more versatile then than other. Nearly 50,000 of this top design tank were produced. It had a complete range of variants. There's no doubt that it played an important role in the victory of the Allies. The US medium tank M4A376W had a Ford GAA V8 engine, a welded hull, and carried the 76mm M1 cannon. Users included the US, France, small numbers, and Nicaragua, small numbers. Wow. Um, so where's this at? World War Two. The latest Meng TS-043 US medium tank M4A3 W model is 206 millimeters long and 90 millimeters tall. So we're talking 20 centimeters long and nine centimeters tall which is uh, nine centimeters is about that oh you can't see because i've got the camera on me so we'll uh anyway um the key uh this kit has a total of 1190 parts. The key suspension structure is the same as on the same vehicle. It's the same as on the same vehicle. What sort of sentence is that? The key suspension structure is the same as on the same vehicle. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. That was just uh, anyway, its movable suspension is realistic and reliable. Oh, right, I get what they're saying. The suspension structure on the plastic kit is the same as on the actual vehicle. That would have been a better way of putting it. Um, this kit features fairly complete equipment, cast numbers, and realistic surface details. This kit includes high strength workable tracks with duct bill end connectors. Fine PE parts and metal cables are included. A gift metal barrel is included in the first batch of products. So, and there's, there it is with the metal barrel. And there you see we've got, uh, so they've actually got me their metal springs on there, yeah. Are they metal springs or are they plastic? There we go. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's a white wash camouflage on it. No, I don't. No, oh, yeah, but there's a picture below it. Oh, look at that. Abrams. Yeah, so I don't know. So I don't know if that has come out yet or not. Um, but that looks like a, a, a buy for tank builders among us. So moving on. Now we've got some Alpine figures, um, so they obviously come out Saturday, April the 20th. Two new 35th scale summer Panzer Commanders from Alpine Miniatures. Um, well, as I understand it, they're actually quite good figures. Um, and uh, I should, yeah, they look as so though they could be fairly good. They look to have a lot of detail on them. I wonder if we can get a closer look. No. Can we zoom him in? No, it's not going to let me. No. Okay. Two figures and four heads included. <laughs> yeah, well, at least said about that, the better. And we've got um, a book on uh, submarines, but that is not in English. That's in French, by the looks of it. So that's um, no good. And we've got a 172nd scale Henschel HSP-130 from Pepper lats. I've never heard of those, so um, I couldn't really tell you. But I have got that tank crew up there, mini art. That tank crew, I'm sure I've got that tank crew upstairs. But uh, we'll look at that. And then we've got uh, British Army ATV quad bike and trailer with soldier. That's being brought out by Bronco. Um, oh, I'm just click it in the wrong place, and all of a sudden, yeah, you, you get four figures with that. I don't know, I do not know. That's due in May. I'm not sure if that's already out actually. I think I might have seen that on Mike Jolly's um, Models for Less site. And then we've got, um, oh, ICM. You know, I love ICM kits. I think they're really top quality. Um, I really, uh, uh, you know, I love building their kits. So what have we, what have we got here? So it's a construction review. Um, part one of a 172nd scale McCoyan MiG 25 RBT Foxbat B from ICM. Mr. G Wickham is, um, so Gary, his name is, he's taking us through part one of his construction review. Uh, and has the internals ready before the second parts, which is all paint and weathering. Yeah, that looks, you know, I really do think that, um, what has he got there? He's used in one of the oil brushes there by the looks of it. Um, so, yeah, if that's of interest to you, pop along there. Um, does that link... Does that link take you? No. So maybe you can follow the link through. Now we can see some. 
Those sorts of the, so yeah, he's done some nice stuff there. He's gone over with a very uh, light grey, and then um, at a guess, I would say he's used this oil brusher to get these effects here and around here, maybe. Yes. Yeah, it's looking very nice though. Um, we've got some of the tail. Oh, did we have a bit of PE there? No, I thought I saw a bit of PE. Then we've got the burner cans at the end. Looks like he's done them in an iron colour. There you go, very nice. And then we've got another book. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Uh, it's German, um, dear oh lord. Uh, I don't know what that, I'm not going to try. It's a book about a lorry by the looks of it. Um, tack on Jag Panther G1. Um, I, I said that like I knew what it was, but I haven't got a clue now. Uh, preview Tackham's new 35th scale Jag Panther G1 early with Zimmerit or G dot g.1 without interior plus a railway carriage in june um so you can have the jag panther with zimmerit or without interior that's an odd choice you can have it with this or without that uh, i don't know uh it's like i'm asked some options for the jag panther enthusiast with just as much work in either kit your choice of the full interior g.1 version with the zimmerick coating of the same kit without interior but with an added schwerer platform wagon type ssys by saber model we have a future set and artwork not much but it is a start in our preview um i'll i'll re i'll just click on that for you know people that are fans of this type of thing um so let's have a look i don't know i'm not going to pretend that i know what i'm looking for here uh but those amongst you that do build tanks um We'll let you have a look at those closely and decide whether it's a, a good representation or not. I would be surprised if it wasn't. Just tack on. Good kits, they know what they're doing. Got a screw shot there. And another one. So they're concentrating, these pictures are concentrating on the Zimmerit of it, I guess. Ah, uh, yes, I see. So you can either have the, like they're saying, you can either have the internal, which, let's be honest, if you have the internal, you're not going to see it because it's inside or you can have the uh, railway track that it stands on on the trailer that it stands on i know what i'd go with i, I would definitely go with the um railway trailer um and that's just obviously a tack um Label. 
doesn't show us anything more. Comes with six marking choices. Lincoln length tracks, track making jig included, photo etch parts included, full interior kit, unless you have the trailer. Um, which is made by another company. I don't get how they're doing that. but um, And that's due out in May, so very, very close. And there we go. That's um, the modelling news up to uh, today, really. I'm assuming there's been no more. Um, so while we've got this up, we're going to now have a look at... Um, people's uh what photos people have entered into the theater um i will show you how you get to the theater if you want to do it in future weeks you want to add what you're building so that we can have a look at it or maybe you want to add something to the triage you've got a problem you're struggling with um you can go in add a picture to the triage and as much information as possible and somebody will get back to you um, and, and help you with that if they can. So I'm going to close the modeling news page. And then we're going to go to the waiting room. So here we go. Now, when you come onto the sprue surgery waiting room, you really want to go to the section that says photos and click on that and then you want to click on albums and then you'll get a load of albums come up some of them are incomplete because I've, I'm still in the process of loading photos up and uh, you'll see some familiar uh, stuff in there that I've put in um, but here you go at the top you've got triage now that's where you want to put any photos of any problems you're having um, with any kits that's where you want to put that and then we've got theatre now theatre is any kits that you're currently building that you want to share with everyone else on the live stream and uh, that's where they'll go so we're going to go into theatre now and we're going to have a look at these photos now at the end um, what will happen is um, I probably think we'll delete the photos from this week and then they will get the date will get changed at the album at the top to the next Wednesday and it will start again. So um, don't forget to try and include some information with your pictures if you can. Um, it helps a lot. Um, so. Here we go. So first of all, we've got uh, Josh up. Uh, Joshua runs the podcast for us, um, uh, which will be coming out in three weeks' time. Um, I haven't got the exact date on me, but it is coming out in three weeks, the first one, and then every, every fortnightly after that. So... And Josh is building, um, well, this is a 3D Predator that he's printed. It's the same one that I've printed. Um, I actually got the idea from Josh, so uh, thanks for that. And uh, he's working on it. Uh, a lot of this is hand-painted. He's using, um, you can see his paints in the background. Um, unfortunately, he hasn't given me any information on what he's done or used so um, I can only surmise and guess at this point from what I've seen um, but uh, I believe he said he um, airbrushed the the base layer of the skin on um, and the rest is sort of brushwork so this is the side of the predator it's obviously a work in progress there's the feet uh, that he's doing. Looking nice. Like what he's done with the claws there. Yeah, I do like that. All right, he's got sort of, um, I don't know what he's going to do here, whether this is going to be a, 
a tonal a tonal difference in colour there, or whether it's going to remain white, almost like a a, a cat's foot <laughs> um, socks. Do, do you think this uh, predator's nickname is socks or something like that? Come around the back. Um, you can see he's got all his hair coming down, which will be uh, another thing that's got to be painted soon. Uh, these 3D prints do take a lot of work to make look presentable, but it has to be said when they are done, they do they are fantastic. They really are top top quality when you get them done right. So. We'll, And again, that's from the other side. This is his gun here. Um, oh, into full screen. I can make it a little bit bigger, but um, yeah. And he's got his chain mail on um, there. I'm not sure whether at this stage his chain mail hasn't been done but i know josh was working on that the other night and i think his chain mail is now actually done um he's got his bones uh like his skeleton heads are there um they'll have to be done in the appropriate color and now we've got um one from dave price this is his uh USS Enterprise uh, from Star Trek. We all know this one, NCC 1701. Um, lovely, lovely kit. I, uh, I, I've built this kit already, but I didn't have any electronic skill at all at the time, so mine just went together. It was there was no lights or anything. Dave's really gone to town on this one. Um, and he's done a superb job. Uh, you can't see any light bleed coming through where the top section meets the bottom section. Um, really, really is good quality work there. He's joined them, got them seams together nice and clean. Yes, very good. There we go, we've got, he's got, uh, I think they're light at the back there. Um, and then we've got the red and the green LEDs. And if I remember rightly, they, they flash. He did, um, I was talking to him the other day and he, he did turn all this on and turn all the lights out. It looks fantastic. And it's only just going to keep looking better and better the more he does to it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that looks pretty damn good. Very good indeed. And then we've got, uh, so this is Paul, uh, Paul Shapland. Um, now, Paul's, he's building the baby brother of the big one I'm doing. So I'm building the Snowberry um, 172nd scale. And Paul's gone and got the 144th scale. So um, now bear in mind, this is only a 140. This is a 144th scale kit. Bear that in mind when you see how big this kit is. Um, so we've got some, he's done some amazing level of detail on this. It's superb. Um, he's got the, the wood right. Uh, a lot of people get that wrong. Um, because the thing is, when they sell you the wood, when they sell you the kits for the wood for these uh, for this class, they give you wood to cover every surface. So um, this front bit would be wood, this bit's wood, this bit's wood, all this is wood. You know, the gangways are wood, and they give you it all. But when you go and look at the real ship. There's only a couple, I think there's about three or four parts that have wood decking on. This part is one, just that part. 
this is steel in front the flooring is steel there steel over there and roughly from here across and back is steel um, and then you've got some wood areas here but it's um yeah and i love the sea so you know got to got to mention the sea uh i don't know how he done it um i think i'm gonna say silicon um but i'm not certain yeah that looks fantastic let's move on see if we've got another picture of it from a different angle so this is further back um if we go back one you can see yeah so the we've got our portals here and this is the buttercup so it's got the name on there we can see it's the buttercup and it's in a pretty bad shape and that's that's how they want these oh look at that i mean look at the size of it for 144 it's amazing and he's, he's got his um he's got his line in in place there um it really is a beautiful stunning kit um trouble is having space to display that anywhere uh that's going to be one big shelf that's the only downside to it I don't know how far across that is but uh, yeah that's a nice one Paul very nice you can see we've got uh, a couple of canoes there life raft two and um, this is where the depth charges went off at the back they would drop off um, into the sea and then um, the later versions had the hedgehog mines which I'm just trying to see where they are or if this boat had them at this point uh, I'm able to see them at the moment oh let me go back quickly before we look at that one because i want to spend some time on that one um i'm not seeing them i'm sure i saw paul getting the hedgehog mines ready painted and ready i don't think that's them there i thought they were in a cluster of, you know a round cluster of about eight um anyway it may that may be them there but uh, there's a lot of false um people assume lots of things about um sorry this just keeps flipping back um people assume lots of things about the uh corvette class which are not completely accurate um the Corvette class was far from a sub killer or sub hunter as they put it yes it did fire um, depth charges um, and later on much later on it had the uh, hedgehog uh, mines but initially um, the Corvette was defenseless against uh it, it just a lot of the time it could only sit and watch as the submarines went in and out of its convoys it was supposed to be protecting and um decimated them um it was just a cheap stop gap to give some form of protection to the allied um uh, supply chain rather than leaving them completely defenseless um pretty soon or well, later on in the war the we were able to get proper purpose-made destroyers out to protect the links in the chain and they had much much better capabilities on board um now they were the real sub hunters they were the one that uh, drove 
fear into the hearts of submariners um, all across uh, Germany. But nevertheless, it's still an important part of our history, and uh, they still went out in atrocious weathers um, on, on this ship. It wasn't a very good ship to be on in the sea. Um, it rolled something terrible. Um, there was lots of seasickness on board one of these things. Uh, the very early ones didn't have any sleeping accommodation. You just had to sleep um, anywhere you could. Uh, it was deeply, it was a very hard life on board one of these early corvettes. Um, but uh, anyway, that's that's the corvette. Now we come on to uh, John. So this is John Bennett, also known as Gordon. Gordon Bennett, or some people may know him as Three Sheets. And um, this is his uh, 148th Hobby Boss SU-17 Fitter. Um, it was built out of the box, apart from the rocket pod and trolley, trolley tow bar that came with the kit. Uh, the base, the kit base is my take on the Coastal Craft one which is a bit flat. So we applied some grass flock to the baseboard, different types and manufacturers of paint used to, yeah, I mean, I watched John as he was doing this. Um, we all watched John as he was doing this. This has been, wow, he's been on this months. Um, the level of detail he went into this is nothing short of phenomenal. Um, yeah, he, he, he was on this most nights and he would, you know, go into this in, in minute detail with his Optivisor and uh, he's really, really knocked this one out of the park. This is a superb build. Um, yeah, you, you just, there's nothing I can say about this. It just speaks for itself. Look at it. I would be so proud if it was something, if that was something I'd built. It's, um, you get, yeah, you, that's flawless, really. You can't fault it. And here we've got, um, you can see where he's added the flock into the board because the board was a bit flat. Um, I think, unless I'm mistaken, he's added a bit of flocking along these areas here as well. We've got a couple of different colours going on there. Um, but yeah, that is stunning. It really is. Let's, let's move on and see whether... Beautiful work on that. The paint work is amazing i love this tow bar at the front this trolley and then we've got uh one of the rockets uh missiles rocket i'm not sure um on its little trolley yes look at that it's a fearsome looking beast, isn't it? That flying towards you, you'd soon have brown seats. Oh, I didn't notice that. We've got something going on here. Is it a toolbox or a, a tyre stop or something? Parking space, maybe? It's quite a big size as well, so um, 148, it's quite a big, um, I love this camo as well, it's really done such a good job of it. Really is very impressive. And we're seeing from the back, looking down, I can't see any... Um, 
I can see nothing wrong with the paintwork. It's all very, very smooth. Just got that very, very slight satin finish to it. Very nice. Beautiful metal work on the burner can at the back with the, you know, you've got the weathering on the inside. And you've even got uh, a bit of sort of uh, dust or soot just very lightly on this this area here beautiful Ooh, and um, oh, sorry. So we've also got um, now. This is also by John. He's put some of his bikes on uh, that he wanted to show. Um, and again, these are very nice bikes. Um, we've got the Kawasaki Z900, which is the one closest to the one on the left. The middle one is the Yamaha. RD250, am I reading that right? And then we've got another Yamaha RD250 there. Um, nice, nice detailing on there. And that, that chrome is very good. Um, yeah, the chrome work on that is very good I've, uh, i don't know whether john's redone that or whether that's one that he's not back with a smoke layer or um but yeah that looks uh quite special that yagi I love these racing bikes. I've got to do one soon. I've got a Ninja, um, a uh, Kawasaki Ninja that uh, I must get round to building. Yeah, I love these. I love the colours on the bikes, on the racing bikes, and the uh, and the mixture of all the the metals and really is uh, something great. Then we've got, uh, oh, there's the one I've got. I believe that's the one I've got. That one at the end there, Kawasaki. Um, oh, hold on. As a bike, I'm not really that keen on that one. I like it as a model. It's fantastic. Um, love the, the detail on that. But as, as, a, as a real motorbike, um, I prefer definitely the Ninja. Um, yeah, that's, I'm sure that's the one I've got. All green. Um, it comes with a clear green section as well. Although I don't know why anyone would want to leave uh, a section unpainted and clear. I, I don't get that. Yeah, we've got a Tamiya. So this is John's. No, this is Sue's. Just had to go back there and check that like, like I had reported them. So this is Sue's. And this is her Yamaha XV. So that would be 15. 1000 Virago uh, by Tamiya. It's 112. Engine is done along with the wiring and put in the frame back wheel done and fitted so um sue hasn't actually been modeling that long but her models are very good um and it's, uh, we often joke that they're better than paul's <laughs> well i say joke <laughs> look at that 
look at the level of detail on that look at that that chrome casing that gold ring yeah that's different she's got the different metallic colors um to give variation in time love it love it We've got the chrome there looks like a chrome ring there and then it's got the matte aluminium cylinder head very good soon it's very good Oh, excellent the side view and then we've got a uh, cable coming off of this um looks like she might have took that out of paul's hearing aid um, so you probably won't be able to hear anything we're saying later excellent oh look at that very nice strategically placed um artisan uh sticker in the background uh sue's also apart from being a moderator on the, um, the spruce surgery waiting room she's also a moderator on the artisan what's the artisan auto auto works or something hold on i've got a sticker here no, it's artisan model hall, halls, model house, um, and uh, they're, they're also on Facebook. Uh, the group is run by Jim Shepherd. Um, I haven't met Jim. I've spoke with him sort of, uh, you know, when I've been commenting on his work. Um, seems like a great guy, um, worthy of uh, a subscription. He's got some great stuff that goes on there. Some his car builds are phenomenal. Um, so yeah, if you, if you're definitely into cars and stuff like that, pop along to Artisan and uh, give a subscription there, um, and you won't go far wrong. Another great site. You should all support one another yeah so we've got a uh, frame going on there looking really good beautiful look at this so as i understand it sue um put a clear yellow over the chrome instead of using a gold paint and it has worked tremendously um, look at this here. And then you come back and you've got the chrome. Oh, damn, it's just bloody good. And then we're back to John. Um, and this time we've got a pair of Tamiya Ducati number ones. Built out of the box, 65, out the box, 65 modified Tamiya kit to a different spec and year to the kit one. Right. So this one here is saying he modified it um, to a different spec and year than the kit one. Um, uh gordon researches his builds thoroughly um so when he says he's built it to a different spec and then you can believe he has um if they are both the same yeah they're both the same bike you can see a massive difference so they're both ducati number ones except this one is modified and you can see it um there's a difference in the front fork there um apart from just a different color i think i'm seeing a second it's just you know fit in there um we've got a different fare and it's almost fully enclosed with an air vent there um not sure if the exhaust is more 
um, enclosed, it's tucked in more. And we've got the swinging arm there. Oh, what, what happened there? Yeah, so um, got some different, obviously different decals, Marlborough. I mean, they're hard to get, well, they're not hard to get hold of, they're fairly easy to get hold of, but um, it's very rare now that you'll get um, cigarette advertising in model kits, which I think is a shame um because now you you know i've had to go and get the camel um sponsors for the formula one car i've got because uh they don't do them uh in the box so you're left with a big blank space where you know they would have had their advertising um which is a shame yeah very nice very good so um that he, that brings this uh, theatre to an end. So don't forget, next week, um, if you want your pictures to be shown on the live stream, just pop into the theatre, put uh, as many as you want up of the, you, you know of, of your build, and uh, description would be great so that uh, we know what you've used and any anything you've done and stuff like that and um yeah we'll go through it all next week so for now I'm just going to stop sharing that and that will bring me back to um somehow i've got to get It's all very well though. Right. Right. There we go. Right. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Right. So now then. Now we're going to come on to the uh, the learning bit. Um, this week we have got a bit of a tutorial so um, I ordered some supplies this week which uh, and one of the things I wanted was Tamiya's accent um, color panel line wash they do um, unfortunately for some reason I forgot to buy it um, I forgot to order it and it didn't come so um, I had no money to get any from anywhere else. And what, even when I went and had a look, it's not available, struggling to get it in this country. The one place that did sell it um, that I, was known to me was Hero Boy, but they were sold out. So with that, um, I deemed to find out how to make my own. And I made this. And I've got to say, um, this works a treat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make, uh, I am not going to make any more of this up uh, because I've got what I need of the black, but I'm going to make uh, a grey one up. Um, and we go from there. So what do you need to do this? Well, you will need um, one empty glue jar if you want to make it as authentic to the Tamiya stuff as you can. You're obviously going to need your oils. And you're also going to need a bottle of white spirit. Needs to be white spirit, not... Um, not uh surgical spirit is no good clean spirit no good um it needs to be white spirit to be honest i'm not certain on clean spirit but um uh i you know for this for this i'm using this i know this works so first things first we want to select our colour. 
let me just get my I'm going to use the plastic um, well, because I don't want to crack the glass with the metal one so as we're making grey we're going to use obviously black and white um, now we're going to have I want to make a I don't want to make a really dark grey. I want to make it sort of mid-range. So first things first, we're just going to put... Um, uh, how am I going to best measure this? So literally... We're talking... About the letter U so uh what do we got there about about four centimeters in length definitely no more i might have put in a bit too much of that but we'll see then i'm going to add my white And obviously we want at least, at least double the amount. That may seem a lot, but you've got to think you're diluting this with a whole bottle of um, spirit. So let's just... Get a rough idea of uh, how much that is in there. That's going to be about right, I think, you know. You don't have to mix it up like this in the bottom. I just wanted to get a rough idea and make sure I'm heading in the right direction because um, there's a lot more black at the top to go in that. Um, but uh, we will see. Um, let me just get... Uh, a bit of kitchen roll just to wipe that off it's a very quick thing to make this uh, oil wash very quick it kind of makes you realize how much um, money they make on it then we're going to add our white spirit into the not to the top you want to fill it about three quarters because you want room to shape for it to agitate and then screw the cap back down and then start shaking Already we've gone uh, the mid sort of grey colour that I'm looking for. It hasn't all mixed though yet. But we are getting there. Slowly. So the way to check is just to look on the bottom um, and you're looking to be able to see the bubbles in there moving around under the surface where it's Yeah, we're getting there, and that's exactly the colour I'm looking for. That's exactly right. I was so lucky to hit that first time. I allowed a good half hour for doing this. Um, I really thought I was going to need it, uh, but uh, that's that's gone really well. Um, just trying to see if I've got anywhere I can... Yeah, that's mixed up at the bottom. So let's bring in um, Robo Bod. 
and uh, this I've just finished this there's a video gone out at the moment uh, showing you um, this little minx um, there will be photos going out as well uh, maybe to later on today or tomorrow so now once you've mixed it up you need to check that it is actually okay it is right um, so you need to find somewhere this obviously black would be better on this model but I'm just demonstrating um, so I'm going to use on the back here on this where this ridge is and we're going to see it should be a nice strong color that flows around There we go. There we go. And then you leave that for a little bit just to dry off. And that should still be there. And I can already see that that's okay. And then you just come along with um, your wet cotton bud when you're ready and just wipe off the excess of which there isn't really any there we go and then just dry that off took a bit off the i've took a bit out of the um recess there but uh it wasn't meant to have any there anyway so but there we go um and that's making your own oil wash um, and the first thing you need to do is get a label and put on it um, because otherwise you'll end up with rows of uh, so these at the moment I'm okay because I've only got two but I've got uh, a black um, sprue goo a regular sprue goo um, I've got my oil wash which is now labeled and then this will be labelled as oil wash grey. Um, but they are about six quid to buy from Japan. Um, and uh, what's it taken me? Uh, a few minutes. Uh, a few minutes. Uh, I mean, I bought a pack, this for a pound. Um, and I've barely used, I've barely used a tenth of it. You could probably make 74, let's see, you could make, um, how big is that? How big is the, these, uh, glue bottles? I've got one with a label on. So they are, oh, there's no mils on here. 40 mils, 30 mils, 40 mils, 40 mils. So 40s would go into that 20 odd times, 40, just under 20 odd times. So about 18 times. You could probably make 18 full jars for one pound there. And two pound worth of colors um if you wanted to do a really good one and you want to equal the quality of time you could get yourself some really good oil paints you would still make a complete killing because 18 bottles of of that uh, even at six quid which is cheap for that for their oil panel line wash um i mean 10 would be 60 quid uh, 20 would be 120 quid so yeah you know you do the math it's uh, really is really pleased with this uh, pleased how it came out um, I'm going to do a car next I think um, I've been putting up too many I've been putting models up on artisan that are not really cars they're a car um, although they don't mind you can put any models up you want but i think uh out of respect i should really put a car up next um 
There we go, that's really, I'm quite chuffed with that. Um, there we go. So let's have a quick look at the chat. Um, one of the new things we'll start doing is once we've finished what we're doing for the night, rather than stumble around looking for something to do, we're just going to, we'll just end the show um, on, on there and then. So um, I'm just going to do the chat and then we'll close off. Um, so where has the chat gone? There it is. How much chat is that? Right, so we got to rattle cans and primers and that earlier on. We're going to carry on from there. Um, So Ancient Modeler says he's still a firm believer in washing plastic kits before painting. Some people do, yeah. Some people still believe that there's, um, you know, there's uh, residue on there. Um, I don't know if there is or there isn't. But, uh, you know, if you get good results doing it that way, then carry on. And then uh, Sue says she does that to Dave. Uh, Bob's rightly asking what you're washing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would say. It also helps discharge static buildup. Ah. It didn't take long. No. Stephen Potter dropped in. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Steve. John Paul, I built a tank when I was a kid back in the 60s with my dad. That was the last one I did. All right, you're not, um, not, not your thing. Jan Zin, hey all. You have done a cracking job there, Dave. Uh, so that's Sue on about Dave's. Um... Enterprise. Uh, the um, part of it was if. Uh, if uh, I'm thinking of the area you're on about correctly. And there, uh, Ancient Muddler says, Hedgehog usually fired forward from the foredeck. So. And um, Gordon's saying it took him four months in total to do that fitter. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We watched. <laughs> John Paul saying that jet is nice. Lord Barclay the third. Hi, peeps. I love these bikes. Um, any word from Putin? No, no. Not yet. Not yet, but you never know. Um, Bob's referring to the fact um, that I contacted the Kremlin and uh, asked Vladimir Putin if he wanted to come on this show. Um, <laughs> I, I, aim, I aim big. <laughs> we'll wait and see. I, I'm not I'm really not expecting any sort of response, but it will be funny. Yes, it is a clear yellow, yes.
Yeah, yeah, and they do look cool, that's for sure. I have done more work on it, but forgot to put pics up. Have to be next week, yeah. Never used oils before. No, I haven't. I've only just started using them. Um, I've watched Gil Mondragon use them quite a lot. And uh, I've really, um, so I've took my cues from him, really. Um, and I have enjoyed working with them. I've got some really good results. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a learning curve. Quite a steep one as well. Um High quality oils are better. Same with the thinners. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that John, you know the scale modeling channel or car building? No, I don't. Um, uh, Plastic Monkey, great show tonight. Thanks. You'll end up with some up uh, with some net troll, not Putin. You know, more than likely, more than likely. But um, as I say, I, you know, I would be, I heard he was a modeler, um, and that that is the basis of it, really. I heard he was a modeler, so I invited him on. Um, it's a, a real outside chance, but um, you never know. You never know. And if you don't ask, you don't get. So um, I've got nothing to lose through asking him, apart from maybe my freedom. Uh, <laughs> if uh, I suddenly end up in Tower of London or something. But uh, hopefully nothing like that will come to pass. Right. So with that said, I think we're finished. I think that's tonight done. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the, the, the fairly different way we've done things tonight. Um, using the news modeling news channel um, and then uh, you know looking at members work it's been done on other channels to good effect and I'm hoping we can use it here as well um, don't forget you can post all your pictures up on the Facebook page if you're not a member of the Facebook page just pop along to um, the sprue surgery all one word capital S's um and join and sub and um you can then enter your pictures in each week um so thanks for watching i've just seen a load of messages fly up i'll have a quick check back on that off to work later all like the new ideas for the show thank you bye everyone great show thanks a lot um, and I'll see you all next week. Um, for those of you that uh, take part in the offer, um, the link will go up in a minute. It's the same one that's there um, earlier on, actually. So actually, I won't put a new one up. Just click on that one, um, and I'll be there in short order. Okay, thanks a lot, and bye for now.